In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at making drum beats in Cakewalk by BandLab. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Now today we're gonna to be delving into making drum beats using Cakewalk by BandLab. We're gonna be using a general method which is really good for all kinds of genres of music, plus a pattern-based method which is really good for things like EDM, dance music, or hip hop. So stick around for all of that. We're also gonna be looking at why the drum kit which comes for free with Cakewalk by BandLab has some limitations which you may not know about and some free solutions as to how to fix those issues. Now before we get into all of that, if you like this kind of content all about home recording, DAWs, gear reviews and plug-in reviews, that kind of thing, then please do help me out by subscribing and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get to hear about my future videos. Now let's get into some beat making. Okay, so this first approach is a general approach which you could use for all genres of music, really. I don't think it's the best approach for, th for loop-based music such as dance, EDM, uh, maybe even hip-hop, that kind of thing. I do have another method which I'll be covering later for those genres of music. However, I do encourage you to stick around regardless because I still think there are useful things that you can learn in this part of the tutorial. Now, we're going to start off over on the right hand side on the plugins tab and we're going to just click on the little keyboard icon in that tab which is to insert virtual instrument and we're going to go down to the cakewalk folder, expand it and we're going to drag across the SI drum kit all the way to the left hand side here. Now when we drop it there a dialog box appears and it's really important here that you select MIDI source and first synth audio output. For the purposes of this tutorial, that's really important. Then click on OK. Now that's created two tracks there. I'm gonna expand them open a little bit more so you can see them more clearly. Now the top track there is our actual virtual instrument track. If we click on the icon next to number one here, you can see the actual drum kit here. And if I click on the drums, you can hear them and you can see the meters moving in response to that audio. And it's kind of for that reason that I think of this as an audio track. You can even add audio effects to it, such as reverb, compression, EQ, that type of thing. So essentially I think of it as the audio coming from the virtual instrument, in this case, the drums. So we'll close that down. Now the second track which has been created is actually a MIDI track and that has its output set to that virtual instrument. This is where we're going to record the actual note information, uh, when we play the drum, which drum we play, what velocity, that kind of thing. So I like to start off by renaming those two tracks and I'm going to call the top one drums. This is just to avoid confusion later on and I'll call the second one uh, drum MIDI. Now also in the console view, which I have open at the bottom here, I like to hide the MIDI tracks there because I just like to have audio information in my console view. So I'll go to strips and I'll deselect the MIDI selection there and that hides that MIDI track in the console view. Okay, I'm almost ready to start recording. So I'll arm my MIDI track ready for recording by clicking on this icon here. I'm going to make sure my tempo is set correctly. It's set to 115 at the moment, which is just fine for this song, but you could adjust it to whatever you want. And I'm also going to click on the metronome icon here and make sure I'm going to hear the metronome while I'm recording. And that is indeed selected there, so I'll click on OK. Now I like to record my drums in separate parts. I generally like to record my hi-hat and cymbals as one part, my kick drum and snare as another part, and perhaps tom-toms on another part. That's just because I'm not very dexterous on my keyboard. Now I am going to be using my controller keyboard to do this. You might be using drum pads or just a regular MIDI keyboard. If you don't have any of those things, then you can click Alt-0 on your computer keyboard and that brings up this virtual controller and you can now use a computer keyboard to play notes like so. Okay, the problem with that is, is it only records notes at one velocity. So you are going to have to go in and adjust the velocities afterwards. It's quite a lot of work, which is a really good reason to actually buy some kind of external keyboard. However, if you don't have one, then you can get by with that just for now. So I'm all ready to start recording. So let's start off with the cymbals and the hi-hat.
Okay, so my timing wasn't absolutely perfect there, so I'm just going to click on that little clip there, and I'm going to click Q on the keyboard to bring up my quantize option. So quantize helps you tidy up your playing and gets the timing uh, tight with the actual grid. I'm not going to go into detail about quantizing now. I've covered it a little in my uh, MIDI basics video, so check that one out. But I know my settings here are all correct, so I'm just going to click on OK, and that tidied all those notes up. So let's Let's have a quick listen to make sure they're okay. And that's absolutely fine. So now I'm going to go ahead and record the kick and snare drum. Um, now I'm going to need to record those over the top of the hi-hat and cymbal. I'm going to want to make sure that they don't actually record over them. So I'll go up to my record button up here and do a long left press on that and change this from comping where it is at the moment to sound on sound. This means that my hi-hat will be retained and the kick and the snare will record over the top of them. And let's go ahead and record that kick and snare. Okay, so you'll see here that the only things we can actually see is the kick and snare on the display there. The hi-hat is still there, but it's kind of on a clip which is underneath that so we can't see it. So what I like to do at this stage is select the whole thing, then right click and click on bounce to clips, and that sort of puts it all together in one clip. Now I'll hit Q again after I select it, hit Q, and that'll bring up my quantize box again, and I'm gonna click that and we should have that quantized. So let's have a listen to the whole beat. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that so far. So let's double click on that and that's gonna bring up the piano roll view. Now, if I double click on the piano roll tab, we can expand it to full height. This is where I can actually make uh, adjustments to our actual playing. Um, if I again expand the bottom part here, uh, clicking on this icon down here, we can bring up the velocity information. So let's say, for example, if I listen to that, well, I thought that that first uh, cymbal crash was a little too loud, so I'll just click on that cymbal there and I can go down here and adjust the velocity, make it a little bit quieter. Let's have a listen again. Okay, so again, I covered this in the uh, MIDI basics tutorial, so you should go and have a look at that just to figure out all, all the things about this sort of uh, piano roll view. Now, there is another view which we can use for drum beats, and that is a view up here. If we click to the, to go to the view tab here, and click on show hide drum pane, you'll see this view. Now it's completely blank at the moment, which I acknowledge is useless to you. And that's because we need to do a little bit more setup. I'll just uh, double click on this tab down here, the piano roll tab, so that we can see our tracks view again. We're gonna need that in a moment. Now what you need to do is load up what is called a drum map. That's basically a map which uh, designates certain keys on the keyboard to certain drums on certain and virtual instruments. You could use multiple uh, virtual instruments for a drum pad. Now I've created a, a drum uh, map for this virtual instrument for you. So I'll put a download link for that and you can install it. It's just gonna make life a lot easier if you use that one. Now in order to use that drum map, we need to go up to edit. We're gonna click on preferences. We're gonna go down to drum map manager. So we're going to create a new drum map by clicking on new at the top here. And then the second section down here where the presets uh, little selection is, we're going to click on that and there's lots and lots in there. And we're going to go all the way down to SI drum kit. This is the drum map which I've created for this drum kit. We'll click on that. And that loads up the drum map. So all the keys are now key, uh, assigned to particular notes or drums on that virtual instrument. So I'll click on OK. 
Now, I'm going to expand the piano roll again. Oh, sorry, before I expand the piano roll again, I'm going to go to my MIDI track. And rather than have the output going to the uh, drums, I'm going to select the drum mat, which is called DMI1 SI Drum Kit. We'll select that. So what's happening is the MIDI is being sent to the drum mat, which sort of processes it and decides which virtual instrument note and which virtual instrument is going to be played with that map component and as I did that you probably saw all this change down the bottom here so I'll again double click on the piano roll so you can see it all there we don't really need this piano roll information anymore so just drag that down out the way now your view it probably looks a little bit different to this it probably looks a little bit squashed more like this so do click on these sort of magnifying uh, magnifier icons to expand it down. And the reason that's useful is we can now see our drums in a slightly different way. The duration is no longer there because duration is not important for drums. But the velocity is actually mixed in with the drums now. You can see these kind of little... Uh, well, triangular shapes which represent where the beat is played but you also have these sort of upward pointing tails if you like if I use my uh, tool here I can actually drag on those and I can go in and quickly change the velocity of a note like so 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 that's a really different way of doing things. You can also see all the uh, drum names down here and you can actually click on those to hear them So that's another similar way of editing your drums using a drum map like that. Now, if I double click again on that piano roll tab so that we can see this track here, what I could now do is just grab that whole thing. I'm clicking Control C on my keyboard to copy it. And then I'm gonna move my playhead over to this bar here and click paste. And then I could begin to construct a whole song in this way. Now, obviously, once I've copied and pasted a few copies over, like so, I could go in and make changes to each individual one to have some variation within the song. Now, my approach is this. I actually make a basic beat like this at the beginning of the song because I think this is better to play along with, say, when you're playing guitar or bass, etc., than playing to a metronome. But I keep it dead simple like this. There's no need to go into detail at this stage. It's more of a guide track, I would say. Then once I've got a few of my instruments recorded such as bass and guitar I then go back and I record the whole drum track now for the genres of music that I'm normally producing which is more of a sort of a pop rock or acoustic rock kind of uh, genre I actually don't copy and paste too much what I like to do is record say the hi-hat and cymbals all the way through the songs and then do the bass kick etc all the way through the song and that's so I've got lots of natural very variation in velocity all the way through the song and probably some little variations on the actual beat as we go through so that's just my method and I think that helps to keep things uh, more natural now for this method we're going to use a pattern based approach and this is way more suitable for looping types of drum patterns which you might see more commonly in EDM dance or even sometimes in hip hop. This is much better for those genres of music. Now I'm going to start off again over on the right hand side on the plugins tab and I'm going to go to that little keyboard icon to insert a virtual instrument but this time I'm not going to be using the built in Cakewalk drum kit. I'm going to be using a third party drum kit and it's a complete completely free one so I'll put a link in the description and you can go ahead and download it to use it in your projects as well and it's called Drum Pro 64 so look under the studio link VST folder once you've installed it and you'll find Drum Pro 64 there again drag it all the way across to the side and then in this dialog box the same selections again I want you to have MIDI source selected and first synth audio output selected as well click on OK and we're going to expand those again and you can see the top one here is our virtual instrument if I click on the icon next to number one it brings up drum pro 64 and if I play on my keyboard it sounds something like this now I'm not going to use those particular sounds for this so I'm going to go to the preset section here click on that and go all the way down to drum vintage TR 808 to get those classic sort of 808 sounds 
Okay, so now that we've done that, we actually are gonna use another drum map in this. Now I've created a drum map for this instrument to make it easier for you guys. The, the link is in the description down below, so you can go to that page and there'll be instructions about where to put the drum map on your computer so you can use it. So once you've done that, go up to the edit, and then preferences selection, then go to drum map manager here, click on new, and then I'm gonna choose a preset here, which I have called Drum Pro 64. That's what it should be called for you too if you've downloaded it from my website. So click on that and then click apply. And then that has assigned that drum map uh, correctly to that instrument. Now you need to make sure on the MIDI track here that its output is the drum map, not the instrument. So you go, it will say something like this, DM1 Drum Pro 64, I'll select that. And now we're ready to start recording our drums. Now we, we're not gonna record them in real time this time. We're gonna use something called a sort of a pattern editor. So we will right click here in this view, click on view and go to the step sequencer. Sorry, I called it pattern sequencer, but it's a step sequencer. Now, just drag that up a little bit here. Now, because we installed the drum map already, the drum sounds here, X4, you can see X3, are all the same sounds that you actually see on the actual virtual instrument itself, the same names, I should say. So if I bring it up again, you can see the names of the drum pads here. So I'm going to start off uh, with a hi-hat. I'm going to change the tempo, actually, for this. I'm going to change it to, say, 78. I think that should be about right. And I'm going to start off by dragging out some hi-hats. So I'll just go to the hi-hat here. If I click here, you can hear it. I'm just going to drag a whole bunch out over the whole 16 beats within these measures. So let's have a click, listen to that by clicking on this play button here. This will actually loop around the sequence if you click on this play button. Okay, that sounds just fine for me. So I'm gonna chuck in some snares. Let's put one in here and another one in here. Click on play. All standard stuff so far. And I'm also gonna put in a kick drum. I'll put one here, yeah, one here, one here, and one here. You can put them wherever you wish, but it's a good idea to have a listen. Okay, that's okay. I don't like this kick drum here on the third beat. So I'm gonna click on it, uh, cl right click on it, I should say, to delete it and actually put one just a little one step before that, just in there and have a listen to that. Okay, don't mind that beat at all. And now I'm gonna pop some claps in there as well. I'll put them on the same beats as the snares. So one in there, one in there. Let's have a listen to those. And that's the very basics of making beats in this step sequencer. Now, next to each of those drums, there are a few options, which we're gonna look at some of them. Um, so let's look at these claps, for example. I'm gonna click on the little triangle next to the claps there, and that opens up this panel here. Um, I'm feeling that those claps are just a little bit loud for my liking. So I'm just gonna take them down using this control here, which is the velocity control, and I'll just drag it down a bit. Now that's uh, changing the volume of all the velocities within that pattern for that instrument. So let's have a listen. Okay, that's about right now. Now, if you wanted to adjust the velocities for individual beats, it's a different approach. I'm gonna do that on the hi-hat. So I'll close that one and open the hi-hat one. And what you can do is actually just drag over the velocities over here to change the velocities for each particular note. Okay, I'll have a listen to that. Okay, and I'm just gonna pop a couple of them up a bit higher. I'll pop that one up there and this one up here and that'll give us some nice little bits of emphasis. Okay, cool, so that's my basic drum beat. Now, in this kind of music, you're generally gonna be looping it. Now, I started this off, I hadn't put the playhead right at the beginning, so I'll just drag this over so it's right at the beginning here. Now, 
If you want to loop it, you simply take the end of that little piece there and you drag it out for as long as you want to loop it. So I'll loop it for, say, four uh, times there and release that. So if that doesn't come up like that and that isn't all looped, then just right click and make sure you've got groove clip loop loopings selected. So now I can play that whole thing with my normal play button and you'll hear it all looped. Now if I go in and edit that by clicking on the step sequence again and I make a change say like I'm just going to make a double clap at the end here, sorry, a double snare and clap. Let's have a listen to that. Okay, so you can hear that it's done it automatically for all of the loops. So that's really, really handy. You only have to actually now uh, to make adjustments in one spot and it's going to change it for all the times that it's looped. Now, if you wanted to say do a variation, then what you would do is go up to this edit icon up here, click on split and just hover over the part. Say I want a variation in the last section. So I'm going to split it here. Now, that is still the same pattern here. So what I need to do, just go back to my normal selection, is right click on this last one here and click on unlink, unlink step sequence eclipse. Now, if I make a variation to this one, so I'll remove uh, those claps that I did, I'll actually, those claps and snare, I'll just remove them there. Um, if we click on the last one here where I split and then sort of, made a different copy you can see that those are still there so that's where the variation will be so that's a really handy way to quickly make some variations on what you're doing and then you could go ahead and select say those and that one uh, copy them and then say move over to here and try again paste and then we've got you could just go ahead and construct your whole song in that way so that's probably a more useful way of making drum loops for that kind of music now with both of these methods using the drum instruments that we've used there is a major drawback and let me explain it to you i've gone back to using the internal uh, si drum kit that comes with cakewalk we've got our drum beat set up and we'll play it And you'll see that everything is coming out of one stereo track. And you may not think that's a major problem um, because, after all, you've got a mixer within the drum kit itself. So if you want to change the level of, the, say, the snare, you can do it here. So let's have a look at that. There's a couple of reasons why that is not at all ideal. First of all, when you're later on mixing your whole track, it's really inconvenient to keep going into virtual instruments and using their internal mixers. Second of all, and this is a really big problem, is you can't apply uh, separate effects to each of those drums. So say you've got a really cool reverb that you really, really like. You can't just suddenly throw that on the snare and not everything else. You can't do different compression on different drums. So it's really not an ideal thing. And I'm going to give you a solution if you're using either the internal drums, you know, uh, the SI drum kit or the electronic drum kit, the Pro Drum 64 that I recommended to you earlier, um, to fix this. Because the problem with both of them is they don't have options set output these different drums to different channels. Now, my workaround is not at all ideal, but it does work, and I'll explain why it's not ideal later. So what you're gonna need to do is, I've got the drum track set up as I did in the earlier tutorial. There's a drum map there, and um, if we go in, um, we can see that. So I'll go to the piano roll view and you can see that it's using the, the drum map there. So what I'm going to do, I've got this virtual instrument called drums. I'm going to create exactly the same virtual instrument again. So I'll go to Cakewalk, I'll go to the SI drum kit and I'll drag it over. This is going to be a drum kit that I only use for the, say, the snare drum in this case. Now before I drop it, I just need to have first synth audio output selected. I don't need anything else selected there. Um, enable MIDI output you don't really need that I'll click on OK 
and um, I'll do the same again. I'll just drag another one over, and this one's going to be for our kick drum. Same options again, and I'll click OK. Now I'll drag those, both of those up um, to up above where the MIDI was, just to keep things tidy. And I'll just rename them. I'll call this one Snare. That's number two. And I'll call this one Kick. That's number three. And now I have three separate drum kits in there and two of them are going to be used just for one drum. I'll go to the console view and play the track and you'll see everything's still coming out on the first one because there's a couple of things that we need to do on the, the drum map to make this work. So let's go in again on the piano roll here. Now let's say for the snare drum, which was on our second drum kit, I'll, that's here. I just double clicked on that snare drum there and then where it says output port for destination, I'm gonna switch that over to SI drum kit two there. Make sure that's selected and close that. And then for my uh, kick drum, which is called bass drum on this drum map, I'll double click on there and I'll select uh, drum kit three for that. Close that. Now if I play my pattern and you watch the meters, you'll see that uh, those sounds are coming from the separate drum kits. Now you can do this for as many of the drums as you want within that kit. Um, that's often enough because you often probably only need to really do separate things on the kick and snare, but you may want to be more detailed than that. Now, if I go over to my console view, you'll see if I just expand that, that life becomes much easier because when I'm playing the track, if I, for example, just want to turn the snare up and down, easily accessible there from the console view and when you're at the mixing stage it's the console view where you're going to spend most of your time now if i wanted to say add a reverb to that snare i could go to the effects insert an audio effect i'll do one of the basic ones sonatus reverb and then i'll play that again you should hear a gigantic uh, reverb on the snare That's great. So that means you can automate as well individual drums, all that kind of good stuff. So that's the first method for fixing that problem. Now the problem with the last method is it uses up too many resources. There's a lot of drums being loaded into memory which are not used when you use several instances of the same drum plugin. So it's really better if you can use one drum virtual instrument with many outputs. Now the built-in ones with Cakewalk can't do that and also the uh, Pro 64 drums I showed you earlier can't do that as well. I have found one here called MT Power Drum Kit which is a free drum drum kit which can have multiple outputs. Now when you first load it up it comes up with this sort of splash screen here and asks you to make a donation. You can make a donation. Um, uh, if not you can just go ahead and click skip. You won't get any sound from the plugin until you've actually clicked on skip there. But it is a free plugin and it's got a reasonable sound. Sounds like this. Okay, so I've already got this loaded up with a drum pattern and I've got a drum map corresponding to it as well. So if you want the drum map for that, then please do follow the link in the description down below and I've made one for you so that you can use this particular free drum kit and also the link for the drum kit itself. Now, how is it useful to us? So let's have a listen again to what we've got. And you can see it's all coming out on one stereo track. Now, if we go to the mixer section of this drum kit, you'll see the mixer here. Now, there's already some useful things in that it's got a separate compression control on each drum, so that may be enough for you. But in case you want to do a lot more than just that, then you can select a different output for each drum. So I'm just going to do the kick and the snare again. So for the kick here, I'm going to select output two, and for the snare, I'm going to select output three. Now, if we play the drums now, you won't hear the kick and the snare. And that's because we haven't created the outputs for those in Cakewalk yet. In order to do that, you just need to right click on this area here and insert an audio track. An audio track that is, remember, this is on audio track, we click on it there, and we will just expand that, and we will make its input 
uh, MT Power Drum Kit. You hover over that and there's a whole bunch of other selections. And I want you to go right down to where it says two MT Power Drum Kit Stereo. And that is the output for the kick drum, in fact. So we'll click on Stereo. And there we go there. Now, if we play the pattern again, you'll hear the kick drum through that channel. Cool, and we just need to do the same again for the snare. So right click, insert audio track, and then for its input, this time we'll go MT Power Drum Kit 1, and we'll go down to 3 MT Power Drum Kit Stereo, and we'll click on that. Now if we play, Again, we have separate uh, outputs on our console for each of those drums, which when you come to the mixing stage is really, really fundamentally awesome. Now, that is okay if you like the sound of this power drum kit. What if you don't? It's not going to be very useful for um, certain types of music. I'm afraid at the moment the only option I have for you are the commercial ones. Now, things like Studio Drama 3 not only have the ability to output to uh, separate channels, but you've also got a whole bunch of drum libraries available there for you for both acoustic, rock, electronic, all kinds of stuff, jazz all the business there the other one is addictive drums which also has those features they are going to cost you money if anyone knows at all of any other free drum kits at all which do have separate outputs um, to go to the console then please let me know in the comments down below because that could be really useful for some people here so I hope that gets you well on the way to making some awesome beats using Cakewalk by BandLab. Now, if you have any questions at all, then do ask in the comments down below. I'd love to help you out. If you like this video, then you can help me out by hitting the like button. If you didn't like this video, hit the dislike button twice or even four times as someone did last week. Oh my. Now, if you like this kind of content, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get to hear about my future videos and I'll see you in the next video.